I am here at Range Guns and Safety. I am here. I am honored to be here with no other. I'm only bringing you the best, you know that. Mr. Leon Adams. So, ladies, when it's time to get your firearms on together to learn i've never shot shot a gun a firearm anything like that but to learn about self-defense i'm here today with mr leon adams and you all need to be here make sure you uh, schedule an appointment get your guns learn how to protect yourself defend yourself but let me stop talking and let me introduce you to mr leon adams what's up everybody uh leon adams with superior security concepts we are here at Range Guns and Safes on Pleasantdale Road. Uh, about to get this class running with the one and only, AKA at Eve Sonica. <laughs> <laughs> so stay tuned. All right. All right. Prevention unit in law enforcement is probably the one of the only units in law enforcement that's proactive in nature. The nature of law enforcement in general, in a general scope, tends to be more reactive. Something happens and you call the cops and they react to that. You get robbed. 911, hey, I just got robbed. They call the cops. Someone is breaking into your home. I hear someone breaking into my home. I dial 911. You call the cops and they respond. So it's reactive in nature. The crime prevention unit at most police departments is one of the few that is proactive in nature in that they work with the community, both the residents and the businesses in a, a target community, and show them things that they can do to help to reduce the opportunity for crime to happen okay so by them showing both residents and businesses different steps that they can take to reduce their their crime footprint or reduce their um the propensity for crime to happen in and around their neighborhood right it allows the neighborhood to also participate in the overall crime reduction if that makes sense yes okay so um, that gave me the high interest in the security field because the security field in general, as opposed to law enforcement, works in the same format. Their model is, let me prevent the problem from occurring rather than having to react to the problem, right? And that's how I got into the security industry, okay? Thank you. Are always loaded, all the time and treat them that way until you prove that it's safe, okay? So, you were at the gun store, right? Even something as simple as someone at a gun store passing you a firearm, you will treat that firearm as if it's loaded, handle it that way, respect it that way. You will verify and prove that it's safe and you'll continue to treat it as if it's loaded Meaning, you would never negligently handle a loaded firearm around someone that you care about. You would negligently, negligently point it at them. You wouldn't negligently force play with it, things of that nature, right? Because you know it's a loaded firearm and if you don't pay attention to what you're doing, you can go to that person and get hurt. If you handle a firearm in that manner all the time, loaded or not, right? You never have to worry about a negligent firearm situation. In a large percentage of the firearms related injuries that happen, the one thing that you always hear is, I didn't know there was one in, I didn't know it was loaded. I didn't. All these different um, statements that people make where they were unaware that the firearm was, was loaded, so they weren't handling it in a responsible manner. Does that make sense? Yes. So if you are always handling that firearm as if it's loaded in a responsible manner, you don't ever have to worry about a negligent incident. That's the first thing. Okay. Second one is C. The end of the firearm that the bullet comes out of, and we have a training model in here. So this is a training pistol, all right? It doesn't have, it doesn't take any live ammo, fires air. I'll use this for the demonstration. The end of the pistol that the bullet comes out of, the projectile comes out of, right? That's called the muzzle. In, again, every instance where someone was unintentionally hurt by a firearm or they unintentionally damaged property, you find videos of people shooting their mom's roofs, shooting holes in the floor, shooting the TV by accident, all these different things that you see on 
Instagram, YouTube, etc. They weren't cognizant of where that firearm was pointed when it unintentionally went off and caused the damage, right? If you are always cognizant of where this muzzle is pointed and ensuring that it is never pointed at either someone or something that you don't intend to cause damage, you don't ever have to worry about a negligent incident. So you have A, you're treating it as if it's loaded at all times, even after you verify that it's safe. And B, you're always making yourself, making sure that the muzzle end of the firearm is pointed in a safe direction. And I'll point out where that is both here in the training room and when we get to the, fire, to the firing line. If you're always cognizant that this is pointed in a safe direction, then you never have to worry about it either. A, hurting someone, or B, damaging something. Make sense? Makes sense. That brings us to number three, T. In order for this to go bang, right? I had to take a break, but just wanted to stop in real quick. I strongly advise you guys, especially my sisters, come out to Governor's Run Club. It's in Powder Springs. It's nice. It's clean. Very helpful. And um, I look forward to joining this club and um, getting it in and learning and protecting myself and my family and showing other sisters how to get out and... Take care of yourself. Protect yourself. Better to be safe than sorry. You know what I'm saying? I'm in their restaurant right now, but it's a lot of noise, so you got to make sure you get they give you they provide you with your your glasses, your headphones, and earplugs, whatever. Yeah, but it's a lot. It was um a really a lot informative, but it was fun at the same time shooting all the different uh, firearms and learning about self defense. I highly recommend you come out even if it's not this place get you to a guns range safety place and just try it out take a class invest in it it's worth the um, money that you take to invest in it and to learn to defend yourself be amazing all right i'm about to get it in i'm about to shoot my favorite favorite firearm of the day it's called um a 300 blackout 300 blackout i'm learning so Vermont, just bear with me, but it's fun. And it's at 15 yards. Hold tight. Let me show you what the sister can do with this bad boy right here. You gotta make sure it's always on the safety. It's on safety. And you hold it in here, you want your fingers tight. Never touch the trigger, I learned that. Okay, this is the, um, damn, that shit is heavy. See them bullets? Wait, you didn't show me that. Fire. 